Hey everyone, so this video is about volume of prisms and cylinders. I didn't just draw this little cylinder here to make that point, but the greater point here is that uh, volume, the skinny on volume, is that you essentially find out how much it will take to sort of fill up the bottom and then just see how many times you have to do that. So if I'm, this is like a little cup of water here. You know, I'd start out and it would all fill out through here and then eventually it would start filling out up towards the top. Now, pretend in your mind that I'm not leaving spaces because I don't want to sit here and draw forever. But it's the idea that you have to fill up the bottom of the cup or the glass before it starts making any significant distance on the way up. So from here. And really you could look at it like it fills and then it fills and then it fills and then it fills and then it fills. So it's really just doing the air, filling up that surface area on the bottom over and over and over again. So what we're, the big takeaway from that idea is that the formula for it is volume equals big baby base or big B, which is to say the area or the volume, or sorry, the surface area at the bottom there. So the area of this shape, not the surface area, just the area. The area of this bottom part or right here, that bottom circle, times the height. So it'll be Find out whatever the area of this shape is, and then times however many times you have to do it, which is indicated by the height. That's it. So just fill up the cup, really. Um, with that being said, let me just clear out any of the other stuff I don't need, and then we'll get down to business. So, big base and height. The hard part is sometimes they give you more information than you need, and you sort of have to visually apply things. This is close to here. This is close to here. So the base here is just this. And it's 11 and 11. Now, to find the area of a square, you can do length times width or side squared or whatever your heart desires. So the area, and I've even draw a little square to remind myself. Anything you can do to sort of keep a little visual cues to yourself to remember where the heck you were uh, when somebody coughs next to you or whatever happens that gets you distracted, squirrels run by. Um, is a good thing. So it's 121. So that's the area of that bottom section. So we would call that big B for area of the base. So 121. Now the height, I just need to know how many times do I have to like put that area on top of itself to get all the way up here. So you notice this 12 is next to it. So it goes all the way up. So just multiply by 12. And that's really it. I mean, it's not as difficult as it would seem. So 1452. And this is the thing about the other thing about volume is it's a three-dimensional measurement. For the first time, maybe if you've been moving up, if you measure length, it's one dimension. So we'd say this was yards. So it's the size of yard. If we have an area, this would be yards squared because it's two dimensions. And now that we're in three dimensions, we're looking at yards cubed or yards to the third. That's where the term cubes comes from, because it's based on three dimensions of, you know, equal lengths. Even though this isn't exactly a cube, it's pretty close. This is a prism. So there's that one. Let's look at another one. A less, ex uh, less generic shape, hopefully. Okay. Here's one. Another prism. This is a trapezoid prism. Trapezoidal prism? Who knows? Anyway, I need to find out what the base is of, like, my little cup here, and then try to make it fill up to the top. Now, the hardest part here is finding out what that big B is supposed to be, like what shape am I supposed to use. My advice is consider the idea of the little glass cylinder we used earlier. The top and the bottom are the same. That's kind of where you want to go. That's where it would sit if you'd fill it all the way up. You want to create a situation where you're filling up a shape and then just filling it up and up and up and up and up until it rises. That's kind of how that goes. So in this case, if I put this flat on this trapezoid, I just trapezoid, 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 trapezoid until I got here. So I need to find out the area of the trapezoid. And the area of trapezoid, of course, is the average of the bases times height. <clears throat> I mean, that's really what it means. It's kind of like a rectangle. Is, you could see it as base times height, but the sizes get squished in at the top and then pushed out at the other end. So to find out what the original base was for that rectangle, so now you have this thing going on. 
you just average those two bases together and then divide by two. That's what this is. You don't average them. You divide them by two is part of the average. You add them together and divide by two. So anyway, let's get to that. My bases uh, here, and you could say either one of these is the top or the bottom, but just pick a trapezoid to work with. I'm working with this one. So this distance here is the same here. You'll notice that it has the markings that are the same. So the bottom part of the base here is 7. So I may say base 2 is 7. Base 1 would be right here. Once again, they have them marked. And then divide by 2 times my height, which they give to me. Look for that right angle. That's the key, 3.5. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 times 3.5 is 17.5 kilometers squared. That's the area of my trapezoid, which is my big base. So I'm going to put 17.5 kilometers squared right there. Now, <clears throat> the only other part of it I need to deal with is, like, how many times do I have to do that? Like, how many of these trapezoids do I have to put on top of each other? That's find the distance between those two shapes. So from here to here. There it is right there, my 8. So pick the right one. What's this 4 have to do with anything? Nothing, really. It's got nothing to do with anything to this problem. Now, you might need the fact that this is 4, see how it's marked, uh, if you needed to find this distance. So you didn't have this, you needed to, they gave you this angle or something, you may have to use trig. But right now, it had nothing to do with anything. It's a distractor, because you're like, what am I supposed to do with it? Nothing. Hence the distractor. So 17.5 times 8 gives me 140 kilometers cubed. And I'll test that one just to make sure I'm not making this up. There it is. See? All right. Let's look at another one. Sorry, my screen got all weird there. Now, let's deal with the idea of, okay, now I have a cylinder, so now that is the glass. Unfortunately, once again, the glass is sideways. So this big circle here, that's my, the bottom or the top. That's the part I'd fill up over and over again. That's, if I'm looking for big base, that's why I'm going to start with this. Now, my big base in this case would be the area of my circle. So area of a circle is pi r squared. My youngest children, who, three and four, they sing that song all the time. I don't know why I've tried to make them into a nerd, but what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, pi times radius squared, and the radius they give me is 11. If they give you the whole thing, obviously that's a diameter. You need to divide by two. I mean, that's going back a bit. So it's 121 pi. So if you're one of the situations where the question says, leave it in terms of pi, I would put 121 pi here. And I'll go ahead and put it over here just so you can see the other version. Because I don't want to deny you of all the amazingness of viewing pi as a number as opposed to just a symbol that represents a number. All I need now is the height. The height is the distance between the two. So here's a circle, here's a circle, 8 inches. Now the difference between these two, so this one gives me 3,041.1-ish, and that'd be inches to the third power, because it's a third, so this is inches squared, this is inches. Uh, and the difference between these two, I should say, is that if you have pi, just go ahead and write it down, and then just do the 8 times the 121. Depending on what you're asked to do, you know, make your adjustments accordingly. Let me check this answer, and I feel like we're good to go on this end. Yeah, 304, 1.86. So, if you are given a situation where you have to find volume, it's one of those things that you're needed to do in your life. All you need to do is find the area of the big base, wherever it is. It's the shape that also exists somewhere else. Assuming, by the way, that the shape is a prism or cylinder. So if you ever need to find prism or cylinder, because they have a top and a bottom, they're the same. So if that's the case, find the area of that shape, and then just multiply by the height. And that's it. Area of volume, uh, sorry, not area, volume of prisms and cylinders. That's it.